What's up, Internet? You're tuned in to episode 5 of the Flip Screen Games Podcast, a weekly video game podcast where two, usually two, but this time three best buds get together, uh, uh, and it's from different nations, but me and Chewy are from the same nation. I gotta come up with a different intro for this when we have a third person on because now I'm realizing the whole thing's just garbage. But anyway, we come together and discuss the wide, wide world of video games. That is not changing this week. Of course, uh, I am your host, Pete and Bessie, joined, as always, by my very good friend, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello, hello. We're burying the lead here because, of course, we have a guest this week, and it is from Nintendo Noise fame, Mr. Chewy Huerta. Hey, how's it going? How's it going, buddy? <laughs> Good to have you on the show. World famous podcast right there. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's the number one <laughs> Nintendo podcast uh, that came out in 2021. What, can you, someone tell me what Nintendo Noise is and where they can, uh, where they could find well, it? Well, I'll tell you what, Steve. Nintendo Noise is a weekly Nintendo podcast produced by Flip Screen Games where the three of us get together and talk about Nintendo. Crazy. Wow. That's, yeah. That's great. People yeah. should go and find that. And if they're on YouTube, click the little card. It'll be there. If not, go to flipscreen.games because, you know, there's a link right there to Nintendo Noise. And it's well worth listening to. And with that, we're actually already into the plugs. So thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Uh, Please like, share, subscribe. If you want to show your support for the show, you can head over to patreon.com slash flipscreengames. Just like our Patreon producers for the month of September. Of course, our Christopher Valenz, a.k.a. That Doc Guy, Zaid Ida, and Waka Hula. Thank you all so much for your support over on patreon.com slash flipscreengames. If you want to get over there and uh, show your support, there are a lot of great perks that you can get, including including one more thing, our weekly Patreon-exclusive podcast where we keep the conversation rolling. This week, we will be talking about why I am recording in my kitchen. If you are watching on YouTube, you'll see I'm in a bit of a different setup. Uh, My basement flooded again, and not just once, but twice in a week. So it's bad. It's bad out here. Uh, but you can go listen to that whole conversation on one more thing. And also, I found a cat. It's a very eventful week. It's going to be a good episode of that show. We haven't even recorded it yet, uh, but go check it out. Um, it's a great way to show your support, and you can get a little bit of extra flip screen in your feed. Uh, of course, if you want to keep up with all the stuff we're doing, you can head over to flipscreen.games, where we have links to everywhere else we are on the web. Our Twitch channel, where we stream every Thursday. Uh, this past Thursday, we just streamed some Splatoon 2. And uh, if you were watching live, you saw Chewy carry us to just unbelievable glory, uh, because my man knows how to handle those. Uh, those what's, what's your your gun of choice? You use the paint bucket. I use the sloshing machine. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's a bucket. Yeah, well, you're you're I'll, you're a deadly motherfucker in that game. That's what we're gonna say. So if you want to go watch Chewie just absolutely demolish kids in Splatoon two, uh, go check out the vod and uh, make sure you tune into our next stream every Thursday. And uh, that's actually one of the things you can get on the Patreon. You can vote on what games we'll play in those weekly streams. So uh, go check that out. Uh, and then of course we're on Twitter. You know you can come and uh, get your thoughts right on the air during our uh, question block segment or during our main topics. Um, a great way to do that aside from Twitter, you can come join the Discord. We have a thread every week where we source questions from the whole community or you can email us at questions at flipscreen.games and get your thoughts read on the air that way so uh that's enough shilling on my end for now let's jump into what we're playing uh i'm gonna get my stuff out of the way because it's basically the same stuff i've been playing i know i promised you all that i would have some ghost of tsushima (laughs) impressions this week but here's the thing i download i paid for the game i downloaded it uh tuesday night and it took a while, a while to download because I had to download the whole PS5 version and all that stuff and transfer my, my stuff over. So I planned on playing it Wednesday night. That is when my basement flooded. So uh, ha- do not have the impressions for you, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to try to get to it before next show, but I am going on a vacation, so we'll see. But I'll have some thoughts for you sooner or later. I bought the game, and I promise I'm going to check it out. Um, so I, I, the time I did get to spend playing games this week was chipping away at Mass Effect uh, 3. I'm getting near the end of that. And uh, more interestingly, I would say, is in Pokemon Unite, I finally climbed out of great uh, in ranked. And I am now in uh, expert. And I am one win away from getting to, uh, I think, veteran is the next. I think it's veteran, ultra, and nice. then master. Um, did you get to try Blastoise yet? I haven't. I played against him a few times uh, last night uh, when he dropped, and uh, I'm really interested in him. His kit seems really cool. I didn't have enough coins to um, to unlock him, and I like almost went and spent more money on it, but I'm like, I 
just spent thirty dollars on Ghost. Um, you know, I, it's so interesting how they're keeping all these uh, these characters that people really wanted to to have, just holding them back yeah. until they've bought you, everyone's used up their coins, and then it's just like, oh. Well, I mean, I, uh, I will more get more coins, Steve. You know, you get. I coins. know, I know, I know. I'm I'm pretty close though now because well the thing was I was saving up coins for Blastoise and then Blissey came out and I was like oh well if Blissey just came out Blastoise is probably far off I was wrong um so I've got like it was a weird way they announced that it was so yeah. bizarre so I have like four four thousand coins or something like that and I think Blastoise I think is like six or eight so I'm pretty far away um so we'll see I will probably buckle and buy more micro uh transactions so that I can unlock him sooner but we'll see what happens. Pay to win. Pay to win. Pay to win game, you know? <laughs> um, but I am really happy that I'm finally out of great. Like, every ranked game, even the ones that I lose, they don't sting as bad because, like, we're losing because we're getting outplayed, not because, like, I'm trying to score and somebody else is, like, in the middle of the fucking... It's, oh, there's 10 seconds on the clock and I'm attacking creeps for some reason. It's like, Jesus Christ. Do... Is does great work kind of the same where you get to like great one, great two, great three, or whatever before you move on to the next one? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm never gonna get out of there. <laughs> where are you still in great? I, I yeah. I well, I made it to great kind of recently, and then I won a couple. I'd lose, and then one of my diamonds would go away, and then I'd win some more. And basically, I've just been stuck at that level one tier forever. And I finally found out how to look at my um, win percentages. Oh. I'm so sad. Yeah, it's, so sad. it's a little demoralizing. <laughs> I'm like 44%. Uh. <laughs> like, I, I was, I remember the last time. I couldn't time ever I, look at any of those. The last time I looked at it, I think my win, my win weight win rate was like just higher than 50 50 it was like maybe i'm like 55 45 or something like that so i'm winning more mm -hmm. than i'm losing but not as much of a of a gap as i'd want to see but i looked at um they give you it for each individual character and with lucario i win 75 percent of my games so with my main uh. i win a lot more games which is you know, probably telling um but yeah but we should we should queue up again you know maybe we can uh maybe we can get everybody together and i'll, I'll carry you out of uh I'll carry you. You didn't carry us last time. I was not as good last time. You know, I've been putting in them reps. <laughs> I, I, I was so demotivated by when we played. It was, it was like, <laughs> yeah, Steve, come, I'll teach you. I'll teach you how to play Pokemon Unite. You know? And we I was just like, got our yeah, teeth great. kicked you know, in. I'm gonna be with a great team. And we've got Chewie, we've got P, we've got AJ, we've got Sierra. I was like, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And then we just got like wiped out. Here's every the thing. I'm, time. Here's the thing. I'm thinking I might make a Smurf account. Uh, which is when you just like make a second account in a game so that you can rank up again, and I'll use that to play with you guys, so that I'm not pulling in like expert people into our ranked games, and we can play yes. against like beginners. Please do that. Please and, do. And we'll, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I think it wasn't working in our favor the matchmaking, and I was I was saying to to Chewie, you know, when when we set up the Splatoon two stuff, it's it's going to be one of us two setting the match up, and then Chewie's going to join us. Yeah. Because I'm not doing it the other way around. I made that mistake before, and I just it's like I'm not getting anywhere here. This is just not working out for me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm I'm still I'm still in on Pokemon Unite. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Like I definitely am not. Uh, as obsessively playing it like every single day but i'm still playing a couple nights a week for at least a half hour to an hour so um yeah i'm still having fun with it i'm getting real close to uh unlocking that syndrance uh skin at the end of the the season pass which is nice so i oh, cool. think you'll be done after that once the season's over do you think you're probably gonna fall off because there's no motivation or incentive nah. for you to keep going i think i'll keep playing and they're gonna there'll be a season two you know yeah um yeah they just keep coming yep and you know they keep putting out pokemon so like if i end up playing blastoise and i really like blastoise that'll be like a whole new angle to the game for me to appreciate right yeah I'm taking on a new character and he's a defender and i'm not very good as any of the other defenders um so if i like mm -hmm. him that'll open up a whole new type of role that i can play you know i've been practicing gardevoir a little bit recently so i can kind of have more options um if I get on a team and like, you know, everybody picks the characters I'm good with, you know, it's like, I want to, I want to still be able to contribute. <laughs> yeah. I only really play nine tails and I'm just like, man, I need to learn some different ones because it, 
I don't. I, I just don't know who to unlock because I'm like I don't know what kind of play style I want to go with because I don't explore the other ones. You know. I mean, if you so... like Nine Tails, Gardevoir is probably a good one to pick up next because it's similar kind mm -hmm. of like range attacks. It's more about like the burst damage rather than like getting up close and personal or like auto attacks and stuff. Um. Mm -hmm. So maybe maybe that would be good. Yeah, I I could try that out. Yeah, I think I'm more of the ranged type uh, kind of gameplay, but. I don't know. I also get my butt kicked by other ones, and I'm just like, man, maybe I should try that person out. <laughs> so, we'll I mean, see. that's a good way, you know. Like, if you play against a, another Pokemon and you're like, damn, like, yeah, they they're really kicking my butt like every time. It's like, you know, at the very least, if you pick up that character, it'll help you understand how they work better, and then you'll have a better idea of how to be like, oh, this is what shuts them down, or this is what I, this is how I can avoid it, right? True. True. Yeah. yeah um, same kind of thing. It's Splatoon. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, the the better you know what the options are in the metagame, the better you can react to them, right? Mm hmm So, yeah. Uh, like I said, I'll play some new games for next week. Um, <laughs> I'm still chipping away at these guys. So, uh, speaking of, of new games, uh, Steve, you were playing some Psychonauts 2, and I know you streamed that uh, on the channel last week. How are you getting on with I it? I did. Uh, I... I adore this game and I was so cold on it. It was unreal. And I was so close to not even bothering picking it up. I'd never played the first one. The trailers for this game, they really catered for people who had played the first one. And it like leaned into that. There was this cult classic that was coming back. And I was like, well, I never played the first one. I don't know anything about this. This doesn't look like the kind of game for me. The main guy looks like he's come straight out of ants with his big cube head. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm just, you know, I'm I'm not really kind of here for this game. But then I saw uh, a bunch of people talking about it on Twitter and a bunch of, of critics like praising it and how it's possibly one of the best 3D platformers in years. And so I decided to download it because it's on Game Pass. Um, which I love because obviously there's no risk there. Uh, I could just mm -hmm. try the game. If I didn't like it, then, you know, no harm done. Right. And it, it's fantastic. It's it's really, really good. I love the fact that at the beginning of the game, it drops you in. You kind of have no idea what's going on. You, you've got to figure it out yourself. And it, it doesn't do that thing like you know, a lot of sequels do where you're starting fresh from the beginning. You have all of the powers that you got in the first game. They, You've already got them at the beginning, essentially. I love that in a sequel. I'll <laughs> tell you what. The first game I ever saw do that was Arkham City, and I was like, oh, we're off to the fucking races. I already have all the tools. Because then they have to give you new stuff, and you're just going to have yeah. like, a crazy arsenal. Mm -hmm. That's so rewarding. I love that. Yeah, and each of the skills can be leveled up at the, the vending machine. You, there's tons of collectibles in the game, and you kind of combine them, and you you level up your badges. Um, so there's a lot there's a lot there, but also I just you know I'm in love with I'm in love with everything in this game. Like it visually looks in, it looks great. The story's awesome. The voice acting's fantastic. I was really impressed with the, the soundtrack from what I saw. The when soundtrack you were it. absolutely it's great. Is, it's absolutely killer. And every single world you go to, it really feels unique. Not only because of the visual design and the the sound and like. I mean, we should kind of step back a little bit. If you don't know what Psychonauts is, essentially you are a, a trainee psychic. You're an intern at the at this organization called the Psychonauts. And um, you go into people's heads um, to complete missions or do things or manipulate them or find out information, things like that. So the first one you're doing, you're trying to find out who someone's boss is and you're kind of following them around in their own brain. Um, and figuring out who their boss is because, you know, he's done something bad and you want to find out who it is. Uh, and then the second one, you're manipulating someone um, who has like a bad relationship with money and gambling. And so each of the levels kind of have their own moral story behind them and it touches on mental illness and things like that, which I really love. Um, but each world feels feels unique. Like the first in uh, in the game it's all teeth everywhere the guy's a dentist and mm -hmm. the second world you know is you're in a casino because this woman has an unhealthy relationship with money um and i won't i won't say uh why she has that unhealthy relationship you'll find that out in the game um but the you you navigate around these worlds in such unique ways that like you have to use your skills um so there's like somewhere you you have like 
a ball that can also levitate and things like that and you have to use all of these skills to, to get around the world so the the moment to moment gameplay with the the traversing and the platforming is just great you're also unlocking these stories and these puzzles that you have to solve the character designs are just it, it, they're just incredible the but the boss levels are, are great i've just honestly i've got not a bad word to say about this game this is <laughs> firmly in my list for game of the year and i just did not expect it to be um uh, and i think that's why i'm just so blown away with it because i expected this to be a bad game and that was I, it was unfair for me to think that i had no relationship with the first game i didn't know anything about other than the marketing material and i think that just goes to show you can't really judge something um based on kind of your preconceptions about it if even if you think it's not for you it might be and i would like implore anyone who has game pass just download the game and give it a go but if you don't and you're thinking about buying it on another platform because it is available on playstation and pc um to go watch go watch the twitch vod and see what you think because i think a lot of people i think yourself included p i mean i don't want to speak for you um maybe found that this game was for them by watching the stream whereas they probably initially just dismissed it yeah i didn't it wasn't necessarily that i didn't think the game was for me it was just that i i downloaded the original psychonauts on the xbox um and i remember or on xbox 360 and i think it was an old game at that point <laughs> and uh i i I remember trying it and kind of getting into it, but, like, it just didn't quite grab me, and I kind of bounced off of it. So I don't really know what it's about. I don't really have that connection to it. So I was thinking that it was going to be very much one of those sequels that's like, this is a sequel for the fans kind of thing, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, seeing uh, seeing you talk about it and get excited about it definitely piqued my interest. And then seeing the stream, I was like, oh, yeah, like, this this vibe is really speaking to me, and... You know, I, I, part of me does still really want to go back and play the original, but like, I think I'll be better off trying this and getting into it. And then if I like it, going back and playing the first one. Yeah, I, I don't think you should play the original. I think, um, I think it was Maddie Myers at Polygon, um, summed it up uh, pretty well because she had played the first game, which is that game felt like a kind of, um, I don't know, a, a prologue or whatever to this game uh the first game kind of feels like you know it's maybe the starting chapter and then this is the full game rather than this is like a sequel it feels like this was the game and the the other one is just you know the intro and right. i think because the fact that you have all of your skills up front and at the beginning there's the like an animated intro that you can watch at any time from the menu if you missed it the first time you played the game uh, it, it explains everything that happened in the first game and you're actually chasing the same enemy that was in the first game that's who you're trying to find and trying to, really? to take down Interesting. Um, so it really kind of just feels like this game follows on like almost immediately from the end of that first game rather than right that was one kind of story closed and shut and now we're moving on to something fresh and new still in the Psychonauts universe. It just feels like it's one thing that's that's moved all the way through. And your character even has uh, a Psychonauts badge that was given to them apparently at the end of the first game, which you kind of see in the animated uh, short. And that gets um, kind of, that that's kind of just pointed to. And it's just like, oh yeah, they've given you that badge, but they shouldn't have given that to you. Um, you need to earn that badge. And, and they kind of, they then take you back down to intern level. But that doesn't mean you lose any of your skills. You're just then kind of leveling up again. And that's the, that's the interesting. story of the game. I wonder how like people who have played the original feel about that. Like, is that like too much of a reset back to square one or not? But I mean, that sounds great for me as somebody who wants to jump in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think I think a ton of people haven't played the the first game and would be fine with that. I, I, it kind of feels like a game that was very niche because you know it was an original. Xbox it's like a game. cult classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the original was that a three D platformer too? Like it just kind of yeah. continues that. I I don't know what I pictured with this game whenever I saw it around, but I'd always heard good things, and there was one friend in particular who was like, "You got to play this game. Like this is." the game to play and that was just like the original how long ago was that out now 2001 like... or it's, sorry yeah. 2011 is when the original came out okay okay because yeah i was gonna feel like i heard about this like maybe i was in 
maybe oh. I was, might, might have been. <laughs> uh, it, it was definitely college time for me. I'm sorry. I, I what I pictured. I misspoke there, Chewy. It was originally released in 2005, and then the port was in 2011. Yeah, okay. okay. That was when they got the rights back, and then they put it out on, on PC and stuff, and I think they did a remaster. Yeah, it, it definitely came out know. PS2 era. Yeah. It wasn't like in the... It wasn't in the... It was a, one of the last games, PS2, Xbox, original Xbox, before the 360 and the PS3 came out. Yeah, it was Windows, um, Xbox, and PS2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense to me, because I feel like it, uh, the specific friend who told me... That was a high school friend, and I was like, I don't talk to too many people outside of high school or for since then, so I feel like this was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I don't know what I pictured, but I'm really glad that it's on Game Pass, so I could try it out. I have not had Game Pass for a little while, um, just because I was in between places. I moved, and I was like, my Xbox is in storage. I can't really play anything on there, so might as well not pay for it for a couple months. But now I'm just seeing all these cool new games pop up, and I'm just like, okay, okay, maybe maybe I'll get back yeah. into that. Steve, like, honest I, I really question think that is is kind of the beauty of Game Pass, though, right? Is that you weren't mm -hmm. going to try this game, and and now you're you're looking to try it just because it is on Game Pass. I, I wouldn't. I don't think I would have paid fifty quid for this game. Like, no way I would have paid 50 quid for I don't think game. I don't think it would because have been a $50 game, though. Maybe not. Maybe it's like a $30 40 maybe. indie title, which yeah. I don't think I would have paid that because it's just like, well, you know, I don't know Psychonauts. I'm not connected right, to this right. universe or mm -hmm, anything like mm -hmm. that. Not to say that and it's like, not I worth wasn't... that, but you wouldn't necessarily yeah, exactly. have I don't, taken the It's not punch. like I have any nostalgia for it. It's like, well, yeah. why am I going to play that 3D platform when I could pick up Mario or whatever? It's it's just because I don't have that connection with it. I, having played this game, I think this game is worth sixty dollars. And I think everyone that was watching the stream, multiple people were saying, "Wow, I just can't believe how polished this is for uh, an indie title." Because this was crowdfunded. Mm -hmm. How much does this cost? Is it a sixty dollar game? I don't even know. Yeah. It is a sixty dollar game. Okay, cool. Um. Yeah. Steve, I want to ask you a question real quick. Uh, so Chewie said the thing about canceling Game Pass uh, because you know he's moving in between places and stuff. If you were in that same situation, would you have canceled Game Pass or would you have just paid for it for a month or two and not used it and then just you know kept on rolling? Be honest with that, me. I would have canceled that's it. That's exactly no what I would have done. Yeah. It's so much. I'm yeah. like that's so much effort. For I'm me such a piece of shit. 10, like ten pounds. I know. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, yeah, no, I'll, I'll piss away my hard-earned money so I don't have to fill out a form. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I thought it was easy. I was no, just like, and that's the yeah. thing. You're right. I'm like, <laughs> I just was asking Steve because I knew that he would say the same thing that I would and be like, I think yeah. I'm, I think it's literally like a button that's like, do not renew when this next month com comes up. See, that's, that's easy. Oh, like the worst <laughs> thing that I ever had to cancel was my gym membership. And like, I didn't go for like six months last year because, been... of, because of COVID. And I was like, I was just, I'm just keeping paying. I've for this. literally like, been I paying just... for a gym membership since I moved to Philly because I have not been able to get it canceled. Cause they're like, you have to come into the place. And I'm like, I don't live there anymore, man. Like I am such an absolute pain in the ass. Yeah. I'm, I'm, the worst person i'm bad at i'm bad anyway uh chewy <laughs> you've been playing yeah. garden story yeah um it's i made a video about it basically it's a game that looks like it would be kind of a stardew valley farming sim type of thing turns out it's more of like a top-down action rpg kind of you know if you think of like top-down zelda it's a lot like that um, it's really cool. You play as a little grape named Concord and all, as far as like my language mastery goes in both English and Spanish, um, all of the creatures tend to be named something similar to like what they are. For example, there's a character called Rana, uh, and that is frog in Spanish. Okay. Um, so, so it seems like they maybe pulled from different languages, different like, um, 
types of things to name everything which is it, it's cute i was so confused <laughs> when you let into that of like my background like with these languages i was like is there like a like its own language that you're decoding no, or something it, what is this game <laughs> no it was just something that i noticed i was like oh i speak spanish i know that this is a, a little side uh thing to point out um anyways so uh, 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 hold on hold on hold on hold on Oh, is Concord somewhat like a grape then? Is that like Spanish for grape or something? There's a specific it's a type grape of called grape. Concord grapes. Yeah, there's a type of grape. Oh, I, I've I, never. I, I think oh, it's I like know the that. big purple I think, ones. Yeah, the I think actually the perp actually purple grapes are Concord grapes, not like yeah. the the red ones. You know that people think mm -hmm. are like that, but like when you see a cartoon grape and they're purple, that's like what a Concord grape is. Okay. Yeah. I think we call them black grapes here, which is very strange. Are they black? No, they're purple. We have, but we call green grapes white grapes. So like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all are just grapes. crazy over there. Whatever. The, uh, it's a regional thing. I've, I've seen them called all sorts of stuff. <laughs> um, but anyways, Concord um, is basically just getting out of the kindergarten. They're a newly born little grape. And they're tasked as a guardian to protect all of these towns and everything. So basically, you're running on missions you're doing things to improve the town and hopefully get rid of the rot and the rot is just like these little jelly creatures you, you kind of run into some other different types of enemies like acorns that are kind of rotted and chasing after you and you just beat them up get them out of the way uh keep doing little chores for people and then the town gets better and better and as you do that it kind of unlocks things in the shop you can upgrade your weapons more and that sort of thing and while the game kind of gives off like the the gardening vibes and it's car called garden story uh that doesn't actually come into like three towns in I barely unlocked it. I think there's four towns total. So it's like you're okay. over halfway through the game before that actually becomes something you can do. And even then, it's kind of a limited thing that you can only do in certain areas. Um, well, and were you disappointed with that? Because I opened this game, and and this is all on me. This is my fault. <laughs> it's called Garden Story. The clue's in the name. Mm -hmm. I expected this to be Stardew Valley, and I really shouldn't yeah. have because it's absolutely not Stardew Valley, and I was gutted, because that's what I was wanting. I was <laughs> hunting for the next Stardew Valley, the next Lulwood, the next Animal Crossing. That's what I wanted. And instead, I got a fruit-themed Zelda game. Like, What was your impression when you opened it? Were you, were you gutted that it wasn't that, or did you know? Initially, I was a little sad. I was like, oh, man, I thought I was going to be like gardening things. I just died fighting this enemy. <laughs> That's a bummer. And then after a bit, I, I just kind of like kept playing and kept um, fiddling around with it. And I don't know, though it wasn't a farming sim like I was kind of looking for it to be. I really liked what they did in general. So over time, it just like it hooked me and I've just been playing it little by little every day. I'll play like a couple days. There is kind of a, a clock to it, which is kind of unique to those those style games. So there are like a bunch of life sim aspects that are integrated into these RPG gameplay mechanics. Right. I like that. So, yeah, yeah. So each day, like you can get like one to three tasks from uh, the town and those, you know, once you complete them, that makes the town better. But then there's also different missions that will be like, oh, you can't do that till tomorrow. We're working on this. Um, and so y you could like rush it and just go to bed and then be like, okay, it's tomorrow now. Um, do they, so there is do a they ever it. fake you out like they do in Animal Crossing where it's like, come back tomorrow, the museum will be done. And you come back the next day and it's like, no, no, we need a little bit more time. I was fuming <laughs> when that happened to me in Animal Crossing. Yeah, no, not quite. Like once they say that, like you're you're pretty set to have that thing unlocked. Um, and the the only other thing that really affects um, or, or the clock affects is shops. Well, they they open and close at different hours depending on what town it is. And then the other thing is at night there are a lot more monsters. So uh, you got you got to be careful because the bigger ones also come out and they can really mess you up. Um, but yeah, I, I've been playing it for a bit. I've gotten 
through the third town now, so I think I'm about to enter like the last section of the game. So okay. uh, I'm pretty close to beating it. And the story is the story is really sweet. Everybody uses they them pronouns too, um, for every character, uh, which is really nice. And I'm trying to think if there's anything. Can you really oh. gender fruit? That's what I want to know. You could. You I gender guess not. I, well, you yeah, uh, to some extent, I think. <laughs> you literally <laughs> but... could. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but why that like, is so it would be a weird choice too. But okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, little fact. I don't know how accurate I'm going to be with this fact because, uh, but <laughs> basically, there's bell peppers. I hear they're different genders depending yeah. on the bottoms. Like the, the number of the have, pieces, like, four right? Four little nubs or three little nubs, and they're different genders. Um, and one's uh, and one's either like sweeter or more bitter. Well, that would be different sexes, right? <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah different sexes. Um, so it exists. I, I, I don't know <laughs> anything about fruit or vegetables. I would love to have a little herb garden on myself, but I could see it just being a disaster because I kill house plants. So having something, cultivating something, I'm gonna eat. It's probably not gonna go too great. That's not mm -hmm. the best idea. Oh, I I, I just remembered the, the one of the clearest ways that like the life sim stuff is put into the game is like as you're playing as you're doing different activities um you'll unlock memories from past guardians that have come before you and all of those memories um basically give you different powers depending on like what it is some of them will like up your stats some of them are like oh you'll get the speed buff if you stand under an umbrella for oh, okay. a little while interesting yeah yeah, so it's a really interesting way to, I guess, just work with your stats. Because there's not really leveling up or anything. It's basically you have nine slots of memories. You start out with one. And you can unlock more and, up, I guess, equip more memories. And yeah, yeah that it's basically like is how you building out, your stats. It's kind of like building out a deck in a book, right? Where you're, mm -hmm. you're saying, you know, you want more attack or you want more defense. And you you select these memories and it gives you one or more of those buffs. Yeah, I okay. just got a couple cool ones where as you're in a dungeon, whenever you go to a new room, it heals you a little bit. And I'm like, oh, that's that's pretty big. That's a good one to, to equip when I'm yeah, in a dungeon. For sure. And then another one where you can heal yourself by like playing your little um, flute thing. Uh, it's a pan flute. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Love a game with a musical instrument. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't learn. I, I was expecting to like learn songs, kind of like ocarina, and that doesn't really happen. It's just like here, you can play this if you want, and it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So then, uh, you were also playing uh, Kataria Fables. I know you you started that earlier today, right? So probably not too far in. Yeah, yeah. I, I played about an hour. I streamed it, and this one it literally just came out today. Um, but it's probably what you're looking more for steve it's got farming and it, it's more of a mix of the farming with that like top-down zelda combat basically um so a lot of the same stuff going into that if you like animal crossing stardew valley zelda all of those things are mixed into this you play as a little cat and apparently there's this town that's in trouble and you show up to help them out there's monsters getting out of hand and so you're just thrown into the story so far all i really know is that the empire believe it or not they're bad i can't <gasps> believe it what uh, <laughs> yeah so the empire is probably bad they've banned magic users and there's laws against people using magic but then you meet this sage who gives you a spell book and you learn how to shoot fireballs and now you're, you're just like you're trying to save this town and not get caught by the empire <laughs> cool sounds like a pretty cool concept and you get to play as a cat right so yeah. i'm i'm probably all in on that one the only thing that put me off was when i looked at the screenshots it very much looked like a similar art style to my time at porsche i don't know if you ever played that game mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um does it is it at all similar to that i'd say it looks a little different uh the art style i can definitely see the resemblance and everything um my time at porsche uh, i feel really heavily like crafting of like a craft yes, builder yes, yeah. type and this one i haven't unlocked the farming yet but thus far it looks like just be like 
making rather than crafting things. Cool. Well, I'm interested to hear more about it uh, as you get more into it, but definitely seems like that might be might be one for you to check out, Steve, if you're looking for your next uh, Stardew Valley fix. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into uh, the news. We have a couple news updates this week that uh, we thought were worth chewing on. Um, so the first being that PlayStation has announced uh, the PS5 PlayStation Showcase, uh, which is going to be on September 9th. So that is, of course, as of, as of the time that we're recording, that's next Thursday. It's a week from today. Uh, going to be at 1 a.m., Pacific time, 9 p.m. British time. Very odd. Great time. I not, love that time for Not me. great. Very weird. Not not loving that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I don't know when I we're going to... I mean, gonna... it's not 1 a.m. It's 1 p.m. Oh, it's 1 p.m. Yeah, Pacific 1 PM. time. Okay, yeah. okay. You're okay. behind us, remember. You're that's right. a great so it'll be, time. It'll be at and 4 I'm... for you. That's not so bad. Yeah. That's not so I'm bad. I'm thinking we, we maybe, if you can, we stream this. Maybe we on, stream this instead know. of streaming that night. Yeah. You know, I like that. I like that idea. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, maybe we can make that work. Uh, but yeah, so I not not any news about what they're going to show or anything like that. Just kind of, you know, I think a lot of people were have been kind of wondering what's up. Like, is Sony going to do a presentation? Obviously, they didn't have a presence at E3. There were rumors about them doing a presentation of this kind at some point. Um, we're finally seeing it now. And uh, I just wanted to kind of chat about it real quick you know like what do we yeah. what do we want to see what do we think we're actually going to see you know um, i mean they they've hyped this up big time on twitter they they've called it a sneak peek at the future of playstation 5 we uh, it's VR, had apparently there's no <laughs> vr there they no. said there would be no vr right <laughs> yeah, yeah they said no, no none of vr that. is not the future <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day uh yeah, so I mean, in terms of what I want to see, I would really like to see updates from all of the major studios, right? Like, a lot of PlayStation Studios right now, um, we know what they're working on. There's a few that we don't. There's a few things that we've heard talked about or rumored. I'd love to actually get to, like, see some hands-on stuff with. Um, but I, I think the thing I am, would be most excited to see, and it's also something I definitely expect to see, is God of War 2. Because that game is, you know, the aside from Horizon, is kind of the next big PlayStation exclusive um, that's, you know, uh, coming up in the pipeline. And we've literally Gran not Turismo, seen... Gran Turismo 7 as that's well. That's true. Is, uh, is true as well. Yeah, and um, that's showing my bias, right? Like, I'm not a big sports mm -hmm. uh, racer type person, so um, I kind of forgot that that was, <laughs> that was on the way. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, many do. Yeah, I think God of War is the next, like, that's the next big, you know, uh, PlayStation third person action story game that they're so well known for, right? On on the horizon, uh, after Horizon. Mm -hmm. So I, and we have not seen anything. We have not seen, like, hide nor hair of this game. So I would love no, to yeah. get a first trailer for it. A name would be good, so we're not just calling it Ragnarok all the time, which is not the title of that game, despite them even including a fan logo in a pre official Sony presentation. <laughs> yep. um, I I really want to see uh, stuff that we we haven't seen yet, and I don't think that's probably what we're gonna get. I think we're probably gonna get updates on on uh, God of War, on Horizon, uh, on Gran Turismo, but I want to see like a tease for like the next uncharted or something and what's what's happening there and i want to i want to see what the future of ps5 is and what they've got in the pipeline for people and what all of these new acquisitions that they're doing are we still we know they've bought blue point but they still haven't officially said it and what are they doing with them and i would love to see like the last of us collection like all one piece pour it over because we know that they were working on that there's a, there's a whole host of things that, that I would like to see, but whether I expect to see any of them, I, I don't. I think it's probably going to be um, holding their cards quite close to their chest. I could maybe see some third-party stuff in here. Spe like Specifically, I think we're going to see um, Grand Theft Auto. I think they really want to push that. That's a PlayStation exclusive. They want to make sure that they've got that next-gen GTA that they're just they're pushing. I mean, it was the first game at the PS5 reveal, even though it was using PS4 footage. Like, that's how big a deal 
Grand Theft Auto 5 is. It's the biggest game every single year, even though everyone already owns it, and that sort of just blows my mind. Yeah, I don't know. Pretty soon, there'll be uh, every person on Earth will have a copy of Grand Theft Auto 5, I think, one way or another. <clears throat> but you know what's funny? A lot of the stuff that you're talking about, I don't think is that crazy. Like, them saying that, oh, you're going to see the future of PS5, like, yes, like, lately, Sony has been holding their cards a little close to their chest, but, like, historically, like, they're not afraid to announce games that are way far away. Like, I think about, like, the first time they showed Horizon was, like, four years before it came out. I was in college, and it came out, like, a few years ago, you know? Like, um, yeah. similarly, God of War, uh, like, I think... I think Horizon, God of War, and No Man's Sky, and, like, at least one other game were all announced at the same E3, you know? Um, they do that sometimes. They do come out and be like, these are the things that, like, here's what's imminent, here's what's coming out next year, here's what's coming out four years from now, you know? Um, they're they're not afraid to do that, you know? Yeah, and I feel like sometimes they're like, here's what's coming out next year, and then next year they're like, uh... Never mind. <laughs> Just kidding. It wasn't actually coming out next year. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of like my thing too. Like my only worry with Sony is ever like, are we going to see something new or are we going to see kind of like what you've been talking about for the past couple of years? <laughs> um, yeah. I, I think that's the thing though, right? Know. Those are yeah. the two kinds of PlayStation showcases. It's either here's yeah. the stuff we've already been talking about because we already told you. Or mm -hmm. it's all new stuff. And the thing is, when you think about it, what do we know that's imminent that we haven't gotten a recent look at? Right? We just saw Horizon. They're not going to yeah. show us a big chunk of Horizon again. They could show us God of War. But aside from that, like, what are the other big PlayStation games that are being, like, Spider-Man 2 maybe? Like, you know, and that would be a pretty big deal. I mean, we, well, we know there's that Astro game that they, they've said that, yeah. you know, they're, they're fleshing it out into a full thing. Could we get a look um, at something like that? That's definitely a possibility. Then you've got um, the the kind of the new studio from the ex head of uh, um, Stadia. Um, what she was working on, um, Jay Jay Raymond. Jay Raymond, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, Jay Raymond. Um, um, so I'd love to know. I'd love to know what she's working on. Uh, I'm, I think it's probably too soon for a lot of that stuff. But they they they've acquired a lot of studios. They've got these strategic partnerships. There was that one that they announced um, at Jeff's show around E3, where it was the ex Call of Duty people working on this hot new franchise that yeah. PlayStation were hyping as like the the next big multiplayer game. Maybe the, maybe we start seeing a glimpse of stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot that they're working on. Um, and then on top of that, you know, sequels to the big heavy hitting games that, that they they have uh, anyway maybe we'll see mac 3 i'm surprised this is like the first playstation <laughs> playstation console that mark cerny's been involved with that a uh, uh a knack game hasn't been released on i think the only thing they need to show to make people go wild is ps5s on like store shelves <laughs> yeah that, <laughs> that would be, be nice that'd be that'd yeah be that, that'll do it <laughs> you know, so I'm looking at the the list of studios, right? Like trying to just think of like what people are working on. Obviously, Sucker Punch is working on. Um, uh, you know, obviously they just put out the Ghost of Tsushima director's cut, so like probably not gonna see like Ghost Two or anything like that. That feels a little bit soon. Um, Santa Monica, we know what they're doing. Uh, you know, San Diego. I don't really know what San Diego's working on right now. Don't they do the sport baseball game? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, the show. The show. Whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Pixel Opus are the folks who did um, uh, uh, the, the that painting game um, with the bullies. Like, it just came out. Um, oh, my God. No idea. You know, you know the game I'm game talking it. about. I just cannot. The painting it. game with the bullies. Concrete Genie. I have no idea what that game is. You Genuinely would, no you idea. You really don't remember that? Okay, well, whatever. I pay more I'm attention to Sony, that. I guess. Um, <laughs> I know, you know. Yeah, of course. Uh, Sony fanboy. <laughs> right, of course. We know this. Uh, Naughty Dog, we know that they have... There's The Last of Us multiplayer uh, factions that we still have not seen, and Last of Us Part Two came out a long time ago. We know they have the remake in development. You know, Insomniac, we know, is working on Spider-Man and Ratchet. Like, Bend is working on a new IP, I think is the thing. So it's like, there are or things. Something. 
maybe that maybe they're working on trying to find a studio director still <laughs> like media molecule maybe dreams getting a ps5 version is something i could see um you know it's like i don't know like there are some question marks but i don't know it's going to be interesting to see like i i hope that they have some big some big things to show us but uh, what if what if kojima's here could be Right, we he's got to be working. Well, that on the next game. game was meant to be uh, an Xbox thing, right? That's the rumor, but we haven't heard that confirmation yet. Mm. Who's to say? Maybe uh, when Xbox started sniffing around, Sony came back and made a better deal. You know? Yeah, possibly happens. Didn't they do that with uh, Discord recently? Yeah, that's basically what happened. Yeah, <laughs> Xbox was sniffing around about buying it, and then Sony's like, "I mean, we'll invest, and you can stay independent." Okay, great. Worked out for uh, Discord on that one. Um, but while we're on the subject of PlayStation, uh, they made uh, an announcement today regarding One Horizon uh, Forbidden West. And it, uh, it it definitely got some negative uh, traction, uh, specifically from one Stephen Radford. Uh, it's a bloke out of the UK. Uh, works at... Bloke. Uh, oh, my God. Cocoon Dev. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I know he's was really fired up about this you want to you want to tell the story here steve yeah so the um the countdown to the pre-orders the countdown that sony gave us to the day that they announced what we could spend our money on finally came and it was today and they put on their uh, on their blog all of the things that you could buy and there's the standard edition there's the collector's edition which bear in mind the collector's edition don't even come with a physical copy of the game anymore it's a digital version that's a whole other thing that i have uh, thoughts about and um in the small print at the bottom of this blog was if you want to get the ps5 version of the game and you currently only have a ps4 the only way you can get it is to buy the deluxe collector's edition digital deluxe collector's edition or the regalia edition the regalia edition is like 170 dollars the digital deluxe version is 80 dollars uh otherwise there is no upgrade path whatsoever so if i bought the ps4 the standard game today and played it on my ps4 when i put it on my ps5 i don't get a ps5 version for free fair enough it will backwards compatible play the ps4 version um but if i want to pl play the ps5 version i've got to spend 60 dollars i've got to buy it all over again so i have to make that decision at launch to one go digital and buy the digital deluxe version because that's the only way you can get the ps5 version or um buy like a physical copy and, and live with the fact that if i get a ps5 i'm gonna have to spend another 60 dollars and my real issue with this was that i was i only have a ps4 i can't get a ps5 I was going to buy this game probably phys physically um, so that when I got a PS5, I could just put it in and play it. I don't want to have to spend another £20 to get a digital deluxe version, which gives you like a bunch of like in-game stuff that I'm not how massively much, bothered about. How much is the digital deluxe version? Is it, is it an additional it's, 10 It's an additional 10 on the price of the PS5 version, so it's $80, or it's an additional 20 on the PS4 version, so it's... Is a is eighty dollars regardless, but the PS4 version obviously costs sixty. Right. Okay. Whereas the PS5 version costs seventy, um, and you get like a a bunch of minor things in the game, some of which is like exclusive photo mode poses that you only get in the digital deluxe version, which I've never had paywalled before. <laughs> um, so some very strange arbitrary ch decisions. Uh, but yeah, I was uh, I was a little bit wound up about it. I just think. Considering they set a precedent with Ghost and with, um, I think they're doing the same thing with the director's cut of, um, excuse me, of uh, Death Stranding. Uh, that you can spend, I think, is twenty dollars, and you get the upgraded version. And those are games that came out ages ago. This is like a day and date release, and the fact that there's no upgrade path if I do just do get a PS5, it just seems ridiculous that there's no there's no possible way, unless I make the decision at purchase to get this version. And how many people are going to get confused, or how many people are going to get this game? I mean, if this was coming out holiday season, which I know it isn't, how many people would have got this game physically as a gift, and then wouldn't be able to? upgrade to the ps5 version when they then when they got a copy of the ps5 or they accidentally bought the ps4 version when they needed a ps5 version and now they're stuck with 
this copy because there's no way to upgrade. It just seems so ridiculous. And yet another way for Sony to eke out a little bit more cash out of the people that are already early adopters of the PS5 or were considering getting a PS5 and now, you know, that they, they, they currently can't get one because Sony just can't sell or can't make enough of them. And maybe that's not Sony's fault. There's a chip shortage. There's a global pandemic. There's all of these things. But it still doesn't it still doesn't account for the fact that this just feels so anti-consumer, especially when you look at what Microsoft are doing with smart delivery. And I know that, you know, these are two different strategies and Microsoft's got Game Pass and it's a whole other thing. But just charge, if you need the extra $10 for whatever reason, just charge $10 and let me upgrade or $20 and let me upgrade to this digital deluxe version rather than having to buy the whole thing again. Like, why is that the only option? It just feels so strange yeah and i i mean (laughs) it's funny right because i think it's it's it feels like such an odd choice when you know that we have the precedent set with ghost right we've had this precedent set with um uh uh, death stranding right where like you own the ps4 version you want to upgrade to ps5 it's 10 bucks right like that's that's been a standard thing um to not have that option with this game which you have to imagine is going to be one of the last big you know cross-release ps4 ps5 games um it just feels odd like it's it's an odd choice and it's it's funny because you you make the point about how it um i don't feel like it really negatively impacts the ps5 owner because i can just buy the ps5 version of the game i don't need to do anything crazy yeah you know, like I like I don't need the digital deluxe version. I don't want I don't need that extra shit. I might buy the stupid one with the statue because I'm a big Horizon fan if I decide to do that. But, you know, that is what it is, right? Like it is the PS4 owner that I feel like this really screws because unless you make the conscious choice to spend an additional 20 bucks now, yeah, you're just kind of losing out. And this- yeah, go ahead, Joe. Do you, how did they handle um, the Final Fantasy VII remake? Because it sounds kind of similar to what was going on with that one. I think it is kind of similar to that. Yeah, where it's like you you need to buy that certain version to be able to upgrade, but you can't just upgrade. I think that's right. So I'm, you're I'm... talking about the integrated version, right? Not this on PS5? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I honestly, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I... I thought that was like a an expansion um, that you could upgrade to the PS5 integrate uh, version. I know it's exclusive to PS5. Um, if you uh, apparently if you own it physically then you uh, for the PS4, but own a digital version of the PS5, you have to buy it all out. But if you own a physical version um, of the the PS4 version, you can buy the DLC for twenty dollars, which gives you the PS5 version. Um, and new new versions come with with it included. So you can it, again, it's a twenty dollar upgrade if you if you have the physical version and you have a physical PS five. So it's a little it's bad. a little more complicated, yeah. but not a little complicated. But it sounds better because there's an option for those who get that physical copy. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Which is yeah. I mean that's it's it's shitty. Like it. This is this is a a, a weak move. And, like, I don't really feel like there's any, there is any other explanation aside from the fact that it's, it's greedy, you know, like it's, I I think I would, what if I, if I had to guess, right, like why this is the case is like, they probably don't want people to like buy the game on PS4 in droves because they'll make less money, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. if they, this is going to stop me buying it altogether because I don't know when I'm going to get a PS5 and I'm not going to spend an additional £20 at launch on a game that I might not be able to play on a new console for another year if the supply issues stay, stay this bad. And but I mean, let me ask you this then, Steve. Does that really matter though? Because like you don't replay games. So, like if you bought this game on PS4 for 60 bucks and finish it, are you ever going to want to play it again on PS5? I mean, if there's a compelling DLC, then yeah, I yeah. would want to go back and then I, and, and You'd presumably, want the you know... Yeah, I'd want the upgrades. Um, Cuz like you could not to mention you could theoretically the fact that just... I would Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I could I could backwards compatible it. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't I care. Could. If you don't care about the PS5 features, you know. 
Um, not saying that you shouldn't, just genuinely asking if, like, do you really see that affecting you since that's not usually I mean, what The you biggest play. thing I want is the 60 frames a second. Yeah. And, you know, I was on the fence about buying it for PS4 anyway. As I've told you a million times on this show that I don't want to turn my PS4 on again. But I had an alright experience The Last of Us Part 2 last year. And... Um, uh, if I can get a similar experience with Horizon without having to wait to play the game on PS5 because the supply issue, you know, the supply issue has to be part of the reason why all of these games are being backported to PS4. But why we're seeing Horizon on PS4, why we're going to see God of War on PS4, Gran Turismo 7, or a lot of these games were pitched as like PS5 exclusives and, you know, we don't believe in generations and all of this stuff. Um... But obviously, with what it with the supply issues that are there, people just can't get a PS5, so they wouldn't be able to play this game, and that would that would seriously hit um, Sony's financials is yeah. if they can't sell millions of copies of this game. Well, and the fact is, if you can backport those games, like there's a financial imperative to do so. So even if it's not the supply thing, it's like you know, you just <laughs> it's like why not try to double the install base, right? That can potentially buy this game at full price versus oh you maybe you get a ps5 next year and then you buy this game for 30 dollars, right mm -hmm. all right so uh i you know I, there's not much else to say on this one it's it it sucks it burns but um you know ultimately i think each of us is just gonna have to make that call on on what you think is the way to go um and you know yeah part of me hopes though that like sony come out and say either no this was a mistake in the wording and if you buy the the standard edition you can then upgrade to the digital deluxe version or um they they kind of backpedal a little bit and say we screwed up we are going to put this 20 dollar upgrade option in there um so don't worry and you know we're sorry um I hope one of those things happens. Fingers crossed. I, whether it does or not, I, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that because there's negative reactions. Yeah, they've done it a lot lately. You know, look at the the Vita store and the PS3 store and all of that stuff. It's still online. Yeah, they seem to they seem to listen to people, and I think that is one of the 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 positives that potentially people can push for this change if if they want it enough. Yeah, I hope we see it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's so let's jump into the uh, talking point this week, <clears throat> which is uh, a question that Steve threw out uh, into the old Twitterverse, which is, "What games do you want sequels to?" So this is a fun one. We got some we got some folks who wrote in, and uh, I, I've got I've got some answers myself. Uh, so I'll, I'll read this first comment. This one comes from Wakahula, of course, one of our Patreon producers who wrote in and said, I'd love to see what designers could come up with today if they had to remake Toomba uh, slash Toombi, which I guess is what it was called overseas. Um, this was a severely overlooked side-scrolling 2D slash 3D platform slash adventure game on the PS1, which even had a sequel, which sold less than the first entry. I was so bad at the game that I only played the first few areas. Yeah, I remember this game. Um, a friend of mine was a big Toomba fan, and uh, it was like these weird, like, like pigs were the bad guys and everything. Like, it's not a game I played a lot, but I remember it pretty well because uh, I had a friend who was big into it. I never played this, but I I do remember. To uh, I'm assuming this little caveman person is Toomba. Yeah, <laughs> I remember yeah. that art, and I was just like, I have no idea what this is, but I like it. And he just, he fights pigs. I don't know. He just, there's, I just remember him beating up pigs a lot. That was the thing. And he's got like bright pink hair. Yeah. Where does he get the dye? Shout yeah. out to Toomba. <laughs> it's it's from all the pigs that he eats. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. You know? Kind of a flamingo effect going on. Exactly. Exactly. You get it. <laughs> uh, Matthew Murphy, another one of our Patreon supporters, uh, wrote in and said, Walt Disney World Magical Racing Tour, which is like a Disney Mario Kart competitor. <laughs> yeah. Was that on PS or something? It was, it was on PS1, which PS1. I'd oh, never, okay. ever heard of. And the fact that this is branded as Walt Disney World, it's like specifically related to the theme park. It's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, who came up with this concept? It's so bizarre. But it did get me thinking about 
um, another Disney game. Crystal Dynamics made this game. I know, it's so strange, right? <laughs> Okay. Uh, another another Disney game I want to sequel to, which is Disney Skate. I loved that game, just yeah, skating remember. around as Buzz Lightyear or whatever. Oh, it was so good. It was so bizarre. It was like that time, that peak. <laughs> Everyone's making skateboarding games. Skateboarding is so cool. The teenagers hang out at the skate park, and it's like, okay, yeah, I guess Disney needed to capitalize on it a little bit. But I would love another Disney Skate, even if they just did like the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater treatment on it. I'm sorry, real quick. This is ridiculous. I'm looking at this Disney Racers game. There are only three characters that are actually Disney characters. That's it. It's Chip, Dale, and Jiminy Cricket. And then everyone else is an original racer who's a kid they made up who just, like, has opinions about Disney World. Holy shit, they made a Game Boy Color version? We all know that kid exists. I mean, yeah, but what the fuck? Like, <laughs> why would you make a Disney racing game and then not put Disney characters in it? Fucking Mickey Mouse isn't even in this. It's Chip and Dale. And Jiminy Cricket. This is this is <laughs> buck wild. This is wild. Who made this game? Why did they do this? Crystal Dynamics, what were you thinking? They probably just ran out of uh, the licensing money to get oh, any it's, more characters it's it's before crystal dynamics is idos so it's the, it's the developers of tomb raider yeah which is just mad well it, it, it said on the wiki that it was developed by crystal and published by idos but uh no crystal now like idos became crystal um gotcha and so like if you look at the box it was developed by idos who made or oh, maybe I just published Tomb Raider core developed it. I don't know. But regardless, that's just crazy to me. And this is if you look into it, the the tracks are all based on Disney, Disney World, World rides. Like well, Big Thunder Mountains in there. This and is Jungle a great Cruise. idea for a game. Don't get me wrong. But why like no Donald Duck? No Mickey Mouse? No Goofy? Like what what? They were busy they were busy making Kingdom Hearts. I guess you're right. You know? I guess you're right, Joey. Yeah, you know, you go cast. You go into like <laughs> Jason's book, though. You know why they didn't want to let anyone have have Mickey Mouse. That it's, it, yeah. but like, wh- why even make a, the game? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm I done talking about this game. This is ridiculous. All right, this next one comes from Olaf, uh, like AKA Yarno from the Discord, who said. Oh my god, I just want a Captain Toad Treasure Tracker sequel with an open world aspect. And man, also Tomodachi Life for Switch. And since Metopia is ported over, uh, the door is open for that as well. Ever Oasis for the 3DS is also a game which I really want a sequel to since the system was holding the game bad, back a bit. And of course, my biggest hope and dream ever, a Super Mario Odyssey-ish game with Astro Boy from Astro's Playroom in the leading role, where you experience different worlds from the PlayStation universe and the art style from Astro's Rescue Mission slash Astro's Playroom. Damn. Olaf just kind of... I love the idea. I I mean, that one, one. slam dunk. Slam slam dunk on that one. Uh, But you came came strapped. We went deep into the Tomodachi life um, on Discord after this because I'd never played the game. I don't know if you have, Pete. No. I am fairly certain that Chewy has. (laughs) I've, I've seen it a bit, but I never actually got it. So... I don't know if either of you saw the crazy, like, text-to-speech music room stuff and, like, oh. the memes that came out of it. I was, like, absolutely cracking up at some of the videos that, that um, Olaf and, and Doc were posting. Just, like, people just making operas in Tomodachi Life. It was it was crazy. I could see this being really, really popular on, um, on Switch if it came over in the same way that I think Metopia kind of had a moment as well, especially if they brought that new me maker from yeah. Metopia into Tomodachi Life. I think it would be really, really cool. Yeah, that character maker is, it's incredible what people are doing with that. And I'm just like, it just let our own me's do that same thing. Like, let me <laughs> actually make my me as cool as this one. <laughs> so, in terms of games that y'all want to see sequels to, I had a couple answers that came to mind. Um, the first one is, I think, uh, I already did it on Twitter, so if you saw this, sorry, spoiler alert, but it's Monster Rancher. Um, love the Monster Rancher franchise. It has been dead as a doornail, basically. It's since well alive now. Oh, it's coming back, but it's been dead, mm-hmm. basically, since the PS2. 
Um, that was the last time there was like a proper release. There was like an MMO and some mobile titles and stuff like an that. MMO. Yeah, but it was only in South Korea, I think, and Japan maybe. It's really like yeah, it's uh, it's been it's been a tough time out here for Monster Rancher fans for the last couple of years. Um, I, honestly, ever... I'd never heard of that game before I met you. Never, ever, ever heard of it. That makes sense. And now all I've seen everywhere this week is is Monster, Monster Rancher. Monster Rancher. The, the ports over to to switch and now it's coming into uh monkey ball, super monkey monkey ball. ball. Swayzo. Like, what? love it yeah did you ever play this game it was a monster rancher game and it was basically like you were bouncing up hop and down about just hop going... about with the yeah. pogo sticks yeah uh-huh. Uh-huh. i loved that game that game was amazing Incredible. i loved that game. it was like the most random game ever made like i don't uh-huh. know why they made it I don't know why they tied it to Monster Rancher as an IP, specifically the anime. It was a weird choice, but I loved it a lot. It, it felt like it was built around Swayzo, right? His yeah. His little hoppy leg Bow. just going around. Yeah, and everybody else is on a freaking pogo stick or something. It's so funny. Yeah, oh my that god. Game, I think I still have that game. We should, do a le- we should like stream that. <laughs> yeah. No one will watch it, but... <laughs> yeah, they will. Everyone in Discord is a Monster Rancher fan. I swear, everyone knows this game. I swear to God, I don't know if they actually know it or if they're just happy for me because I've been like talking about it. No, I really think they. I really think. I feel like I fucking willed it into existence. I love the anime. I love the anime. (laughs) (laughs) So I remember when I found out mochi was food, and I was like, "Oh man, delicious!" (laughs) (laughs) Do you like those named mochi? Oh, I the love mochi. The consistency of those mochi balls. I oh, just I love them. Know. They're so oh, chewy. I love them too. Yeah, yeah great. Like, about it. it just keeps going. You're like, oh, no, no, I need to tear this off now. And it's just like going to go to go. I just put the whole thing it's in like, my mouth. Bloop. That's <laughs> maybe the that's maybe the move. Yeah. Also, definitely a choking hazard. Definitely. But worth yeah. it. Worth it, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Any um, others for you, Pete? What? Any other games that you want sequels to, Pete? Yeah, I had a couple others that came to mind. Um, Gex. The Gecko was a, a a 3D platformer on the PlayStation as well that I really liked, and um, oh. it it wasn't very popular. He's actually the mascot for Eidos, though. Um, it's like that little lizard that they have. Uh, you probably recognize him if you look him up. But uh, now this one actually is developed by Crystal Dynamics. Okay, so maybe he's the Crystal mascot then. Actually, my mm-hmm. mistake. Um, but. I remember really loving those games as a kid. They like they were a game that me and my dad played together all the time. And the whole premise of it is that he's basically like this like secret agent type character and he gets like sucked into his television and is like going through these different like uh worlds that are based on like there's like a Looney Tunes world, there's like uh you know yeah. like a, a kung fu movie world, there's like um uh, you fight like there's like one where you turn into a kaiju and you fight a giant robot and stuff like that. And uh, the the it character looks, it looks like a knockoff Spyro. I'm not gonna lie. It's not like that though. Uh, and it's uh, it um the 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 main character Gex was voiced by Dana Gould, who's a, a comedian. He like wrote for SNL. He like wrote for this. He was like, worked on The Simpsons and stuff. And he recorded. Or like hundreds of lines of original dialogue, so he makes different jokes that are topical based on what level you're in. Um, some of it is definitely not aged well. Like there's stuff about it that's like kind of offensive or like that's like dated jokes or whatever. But like I think the premise, like rebooting Gex today, maybe you get a new comedian to do the voice or whatever, and like you kind of modernize it a little bit. Like we live in such a pop culture saturated reference society. I could see how it would immediately uh, be something that could translate, you know, and you could have it be like, oh, Gex has been out of. He's been in retirement, but now he's, you know, he's streaming services are the thing now. So he's got to go into the stream verse or I don't know, you know, I'm spitballing. Which but, comedian yeah. do you think would would play Gex today? I don't know that he would be the one, but I would love for it to be John Mulaney. I feel like Mulaney would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. <laughs> oh, no, I thought it was going to have to be someone with like a gruffy voice. No, he's got like a really smarmy know. voice. Like he's very like sarcastic. He's okay, got that yeah, kind of energy. Would be fast back, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like him putting on airs a little bit. He could he could probably get into yeah. the, get into the mode. Um, 
And I feel like if they played on the fact that he was like a very like hip '90s character, and then now he's kind of like outdated and this like you know like weird old man or whatever. Like I feel like you could play into that, and it, it could be fun. Um, a couple other ones came to mind for me. Like I would love to see another custom Robo. Loved that on the GameCube. Um, have very fond memories of that game. Um, but I gotta say, a lot of my big asks I've gotten in the last couple of years. You know, like I I feel greedy asking for more. <laughs> how about you oh, Chewie? Yeah. Oh. my go-to first thing is always diddy kong racing 2 mm. and i i kind of like stumbled upon like you know just some videos that showed nintendo was working on that at some point but i was like i don't think that version would have would have worked slash lasted it was like this little um teaser trailer type of thing it didn't look like anything was like gameplay it was just kind of like a cg thing or something but it's basically like all the donkey kong characters riding on animals and i was like oh no that's not gonna pass today <laughs> I, and i kind of just prefer them being on like carts and airplanes and hovercrafts and that sort of thing so that's my go-to um we're getting closer to and i mean we're barely getting the gen 4 um Pokemon games, but Gen 5, I'm just like, come on, Conquest 2. Give me Conquest <laughs> 2. That's my favorite thing about Gen 5. I need my strategy Pokemon game. <laughs> um, th uh, but yeah, th those are always my go-tos as far as sequels, but yeah, I don't know. I if I ever got those, I'd be, I'd be a happy camper. You said Diddy Kong Racing, and it reminded me of Viva Pinata. We need Viva Pinata 3, everybody. Yes, V uh, yes, hundred <laughs> percent correct. I need that in my life right now. How the about you, Steve? Only the only other two for me, um, no, like number one, the one that's on like really on the tip of my tongue and mind right now is a new Warrior Land game because Nintendo keeps mm. teasing the hell out of us on Twitter and it's driving me wild. Um, and then the one that I feel like no one knows is a game on PS1 called Cooler World in Europe and in America it's called Roll Away. And it's this game and it, you play a big bouncy ball, a beach ball, and you're moving around this 3D world puzzle. Um, I love that game. I, uh, I really, really love that game. I've considered like making I sequel to that game on many occasions wow. because I love Cooler World so much and it seems like a game that would be really really simple but I, I love it I love the music I love the themes I love the levels which are basically like acid trips it's really really good fun this is giving me Glover vibes damn shout I don't out to know, Glover uh, Glover just without the glove uh, little character <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah you're just like the toy story ball it's crazy did you which reminds me see that like story that came out where some studio popped up and they're like we're making glover 2 and they had what? like no rights to glover at all <laughs> <laughs> like people eventually found that out and That's they're hilarious. like we are not making glover 2 anymore but we're making a game that's super like glover 2 it's mittens <laughs> Mittener. Yeah. Mittens one. Legally distinct glove man. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you to everybody who wrote in uh, for this episode of the Flip Screen Games podcast. We appreciated hearing from you. Thank you so much to all of our Patreon supporters over on patreon.com slash flip screen games. Uh, remember, you can write in to get your thoughts right on the question block. We had a bunch of questions we didn't make it to this week, but we have a stream starting in five minutes, so we're going to have to hold those for next week, okay? Uh, so if you wrote in, don't worry. We got you in the dock. We'll get to you next time. Uh, yeah, so head over to the Patreon if you want to show your support that way. If not, come join the Discord. There's a lot of other ways you can get involved with what we're doing here and uh, come be a part of the community that we are growing. We could not do it without you. And uh, thank you so much for your support. So we'll catch you next week for another episode of the Flip Screen Games Podcast. Bye-bye.